We're going to look at this example, kind of a classic limit that shows up a lot and is useful to know, um, for which we can't really use any algebra, no algebraic techniques, right? I mean, we can't substitute 0 in right away because you'd be dividing by 0 in the bottom, and the numerator would also be 0. Um, we could make a table, but trig functions are, are tricky to, to evaluate by hand uh, for values close to zero, right? I mean, we can do pi and pi over two and those numbers, but to evaluate the sine of 0.1 or 0 0.01 without a calculator uh, is really difficult. So we're going to not do that. We're actually going to use our calculator for this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm in radian mode. And then I'm going to go to y equals and hit sine of x divided by x. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table. I'm going to make a table. And I'm going to use my calculator to fill out the values of this table. That would help me answer this question here. What is the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x? Um, now before we do that, maybe we want to take a look what the picture looks like, just to, just to be sure. So, let's make our window, let's make the x min and x max maybe like negative 5 to 5, and the y min and y max, how about like negative 2 to 2, let's see if that works. So if I, I just want to make a quick sketch of what this looks like. It looks like on our window, we're getting something that looks like this. Something that looks like that. And so the question is, what is the limit as x approaches, as x approaches 0, what y value are we approaching? Now if you have your window set up, it looks like the answer is 1. So maybe we can put a 1 there, and maybe it's like a guess. But of course, sometimes the pixels on the calculator, they're, they're, not, always, um, they're not always the most accurate right, or precise. So, I mean, how do we know it's not approaching like point, point, uh, 0.97 or point 0.93 or something like that? How do we know it's exactly 1? And I think this is where the table provides a little bit more accuracy. So to see what the, how the table works, first go to second window to go to your table set. And I want you to go to your independent variable. Oftentimes in the calculator, the default mode, they're both set to auto. Set the independent to ask, the independent variable to ask. That means we're going to just choose which values we plug in for x. And then go to your table, and what you'll notice is that it should be blank. The x and the y should be blank. Now, since we're interested in the limit as x approaches 0, we're going to start plugging in numbers really close to 0 from both sides of zero. That way we can analyze the limit behavior from both sides, not just, uh, not just uh, well, we have to do it from both sides. So um, think of a number really, uh, really close to, to zero on the left side of zero. So maybe like negative point one, negative point one, so let me try that. So when I plug in negative point one, the output is 0.9983. All right, let's try one even closer. Let's get even closer to zero. Negative 0.01. Negative 0.01 yields an output of 0.99949s and then an 8. Let's try negative point zero zero one. Now it looks like that says one. Now one thing we have to notice is that this is kind of one of those situations in which in which the calculator not being able to be accurate past a certain number of decimal places actually works to our advantage because the truth is the value of this function at negative 0 0.001 is not really 1. It's just that it's get it's so close to 1 that the calculator has to uh, has to just round it to 1. So that actually indicates what the limit will be. 
in some in some strange way this calculator this flaw of the calculator helps you with limits because it's it means it's getting so close to one that the calculator just uh, rounds it to one and that essentially is what we mean by a limit how when you approach uh, zero really as you approach zero to whatever degree of accuracy you want what what y value you're approaching so we can probably be pretty sure that that answer is one now notice we can't plug in zero here so we'll just leave a dash but for thoroughness, plug in like points a number just slightly bigger than zero, like point zero zero one. That also returns a one for the same reason it did above. Try like point zero one this time, and you get point nine 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 eight. And plug in point zero zero. Uh, I'm sorry, just point one. And you get 0.9983. So I think it's pretty clear after all this data collection that as you approach zero from the right and the left, this limit, this very important limit that comes up a lot, uh, is equal to one. So even though there's like a hole here, this value is in fact one. So that limit is equal to one. So that's something you'll want to know for future reference.